Welcome to the BFME1 online battle arena on the page 2.22 in a 1v1 on the map Forts of Eisen between myself and the rank 3 player. And the matchup is going to be Isengard versus Rohan. Good against evil, just like in the films, boys. Okay, so Uruk Pit and Furnace opening. Our plan at the beginning of the game is to defend our settlements outside, it's very important. We will try to hold in the mid game and win in the lead game. Okay, so let's recruit more Uruks. Remember, this is no rubble of mindless orcs. We also need to scout the middle, so I'm gonna use one of the workers to send him to this location. And we are looking for the peasants, boys. We are looking for the peasants. Where are you, peasants? Show yourself. I found you, boy. Okay. So the plan is to deny them from reaching to our settlement, okay? We need to keep producing Uruk's though, that's very important. For the Uruk pit to reach level 2, which only will give us then the potential to recruit the pikemen to counter the Rohirrim. I mean, he's pressing S move, S move, you know? But I think it won't change it. We will still kill him. Okay, so we need to bring reinforcements eventually to this location. But I don't know how many more peasants he will bring to this top area. We were able to kill the first one, but I see one more coming. And the Hobbit is still alive. That's very bad. And my war chan is going to be off very soon, you know? So I'm going to put pressure on him a little bit. Oh my god, Mary, die already, bro. Mary! More Uruks. Okay, we need to bring more Uruks, actually. It's a... We will... I mean, I don't care about Uruks dying there, as long as I can prevent them from attacking my slaughterhouse. That's my goal for the beginning of the game, to keep my outer settlements protected and alive. More Uruks required. Okay, we're going to be putting pressure on him a little bit. I mean, so far we are holding ourselves, right? That's pretty good. I know I will lose this fight, but again, my goal here is to stall until my reinforcement can arrive. Oh my god, he's bringing even more peasants, dude. My eco not looking the best, but it will be looking good very soon. Because we will have Warchant, and we can use Warchant here to creep after dealing with the peasants, okay? Oh, okay, you wanna fight? You wanna play rough? Okay, now he knows he can't win. And what I can do now is I can use Warchant. I will lose this fight. There is no way I can win this. I'm gonna use Warchant here. And then we can use two of them to creep. So we will use one of them to beat the Warks away from the lair. And the second Uruk will just focus the lair, okay? That's how you wanna creep, actually. It's the most efficient way of creeping. And the fastest way of creeping. Beautiful. I mean, what a great start we had, actually, into this game. Um, towering up a little bit, just to make sure. We have a level 2 Uruk, let's save him. Okay, let's creep this, no problemo. Let's bring more pikemen to this location. And our goal now, in the mid-game, will be to prevent him from creeping, okay? So, we as Isengard faction have to try our best to creep as much as we potentially can. Get the money, creep, and we can also now move to the other creep, actually, to this location. I'm gonna also bring the pikemen, let's go. And this one is gonna check the bottom creep, and we will keep spamming pikes a little bit, until we have money for the war riders. And by the way, we are also on the most recent version of the patch 2.22, the version 4.6, which has a, uh, you know, <laughs> a new hero included for the Isengard faction. It's Sharku. We added Sharku to the game, just to have a bit, a bit more diversity and work spot for Isengard. The only faction with only two available heroes. But now it's three. Okay, I get the power points also, beautiful. Oh, he stole the creep, I think. 
It's okay. But you got the money. It's more, more important. Okay, so we have now good map control. I like it. Usually, um, you don't have that much map control against Rohan. Industry. And bam, boom, chakalaka. Okay, now we should make bank, boys. I'm going to use Warchan to creep this one too. Let's use the porcupine formation. Oh, you wanna fight this? I don't think so, my friend. The thing is, uh, pikes can creep the warg layer, but it will actually take them a lot of time to destroy the lair. They can kill the warks, but you need a bit more time to destroy the lair. And when he disturbs them like this, the warg pit actually, or the warg layer, might actually respawn more warks, you know? Oh my god, he has peasants. Uh, get, give me the money. Okay. I need to disengage, boys. Run, and we go for the Sharku. The war hero, Sharku. Oh, be careful. Okay, I mean, to be honest, I'm very happy. It, 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 oh my god, I was not paying attention. I'm, ha I'm very happy the way it goes now, to this game. I could have interrupted him from creeping. I'm super, super bad actually in this game. Okay, so let's kill the Hobbit. Let's bring the Hobbit to Isengard. Go for the double hero action. We have the money for it. Just why not? And it, it doesn't look like he's spamming too many peasants at this point of the game. Which he should. Because that's the cheapest way of dealing with my pikemen. And if he would go for more peasants, now it's a bit too late. I would have uh, went for the war pit. Level 2, beautiful. Level 3, amazing. Beautiful. Okay. So we need more war riders. Oh my, oh my god, he was lucky. I think, to be honest with you, I mean, I think it's easier from this point on to play it with Isengard. Then with Rohan. Rohan is a very strong faction. I think Rohan has no weaknesses, can beat any faction, but you need to play very good with it, you know? And the gap between a good Rohan and a very good Rohan, very great Rohan, is huge, actually. My Vorks are hungry. I want to take this outpost, actually, at the top side. My Sharku doing a good job. Very, very good. I mean, he's not a very strong hero in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's more like a sportive hero. Like Elma is, for example, for Rohan, right? That's his goal, to actually make the Vorks to not fall off too hard in the late game with his leadership. Need to put Crossbowman in the tower. Boom, boom. Go there. Beautiful. Okay, now we can use... Hold on a second. Now we can use the Vorks to actually clear the map a little bit. I want to use Warchant and uh, Palantir here. Warchant. Palantir, go. Go, 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 go. Oh my god, my Brit is kind of pinky. <laughs> I think the assets are might, might be a little bit messed up. My Sharku is taking a lot of damage though. Be careful. Oh my god, I didn't see the peasants, my bad. <laughs> I'm feeding power points now, you know? I don't like it. Need to go for the tower, but also... Boom, boom. Nice. I'm pretty happy about the map control we have. And now we will go for the upgrades, you know? Upgrades time. There's only two farms remaining on the field, which is pretty good for us, because Rohan is a faction that needs map control to become strong. And I think he never destroyed my mill next to my bees, you know? Oh, 
They are level 2, my friends. I don't think you can win this. Okay, beautiful. Alright. So, upgrades very soon. It's gonna change everything. When it comes to play this matchup in the long terms, I feel like you need to finish the game fast with Aizen. Otherwise, it will be kind of difficult against Rohan to keep the map control, you know? Because at some point of the game, you might go for Rohir marches, which are basically countering both the Vorks and also the pikemen. But he never went for heroes, you know? It's a mistake, sir. I think you need Eoma when you play for the late game mobility. And Eoma can actually one-shot also the works, so you can easily level him up to level 4. You wanna fight? You wanna play rough? Should be able to win this with Warchan hold and leadership from Sharku. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna give them... Hold on. Heavy armor, boom, and now we can fight this. We should be fighting this now. Oh, Lourdes, be careful. Where is my pikeman? Okay, let's bring the pikeman. Forge bleeds. Yeah, small glitch. I know, maybe he's talking about the abilities, right? From Sharku. <laughs> me neither, my friend. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. <laughs> okay. But I like the diversity, you know? More content for the game. It's always great. Nice. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to buy the outpost at the bottom side of the map and start sieging him a little bit, you know? Move. Ooh, you see? When you keep moving with the pikemen, it's very hard for the Rohirrim to catch them. So whenever you try, you see, your opponent is trying to fight your pikemen in a melee fight with horses, you want to just move. And he will not, not be able to catch you, and then he, he will unintentionally run over you, which will deal the crazy burst of, of the revenge damage, you know? So the map is looking very good for us. I like it. Realistically speaking, I think this Rohan should be kind of poor. Ooh, but he has Rohirrim archers, okay. He should be able to fight this. Oh, maybe not. Yeoman archers on top of the wall. Kill the Rohirrim. Can we finish them off? One more hit. Oh no, okay. Need to disengage. We can use War Chant here and then try to fight this a little bit. Palantir. Oh, he's disengaging. Oh, never mind. Be careful, Char. Ooh. Oh, no, man. No, man. But it's, it's good, you know? It's okay. I mean, it's not very good that we lost the Sharku, but look at the minimap, you know? This Rohan is trying to kill the one Pikeman we have on, uh, <laughs> on his face. But in the meantime, he took all the map, and he was forced to use the heal defensively. It's like a win-win situation in my book. You can demolish this. Make some combos. Bring in the Pikeman. Put them in between. Oh, my works died, actually. Good micro by him. Oh my god, this Rohirrim actually, actually melting our war riders. Without any leadership. I mean, the thing is, you know, on the people, Sharku will make your Rohirrim, uh, the works tankier. But the problem is, also Sharku is actually pretty big against Rohirrim archers. Because Rohirrim archers... Are a great counter to the heroes too. So when I, whatever I, what happened there? Whenever I approach, oh my god, what is that going on? I hope he won't come to the outpost at the bottom, man. 
Guys, I hope you won't come to the outpost in the bottom. I have nothing to defend this yet. We need to bring those combo combos as soon as possible. When you play against Rohirrim, you also want to give you the pikeman crossbowman combo forge please. Just in case you want to go for a trample. Because the pikeman of Isengard with combination of archers actually have the porcupine damage. So when they get trampled into, they will actually deal hella damage. And Forge Bleeds make you deal even more damage, right? That's the thing. We have money. Need to save the Ballista. Need to put the Ballista behind so he doesn't see it. Oh, he's coming. Okay. Need to put the Ballista in a place where he can't see it, you know? Because I believe I can't protect the Siege Warks. But I need to protect it. So I think it's very really important to bring the fight to them. Because if we don't siege him anytime soon, he will take the map with the Rohirrim Rohirrim Archer combination. And then we will have to sit up sit in the base for the defense all game long. Without any map control, we will suffer, you know? And it's gonna be a boring uh, campy game. In order to prevent this from happening, we need to siege him. We need to bring the fight to them. I'm gonna use Warchan here actually. Oh my crossbowmen are not shooting. Shoot! Why are they not shooting? Okay, we have three combos with the pikeman crossbowman combination. That's not too bad. Pinky Sharku, not bad either. <laughs> Level 5. I think Sharko also very good against uh, Peasants and Rohirrim, early game, but in the mid to lead game he kind of falls out too, right? Oh my god, he's coming to me. Okay, we need to make one combo and leave him in the base, just for the worst case scenario. Against Rohan you don't want to leave your base completely defenseless, you know, because he is now Upgrades uh, and everything. He can literally destroy my base in a few seconds. Go back to the shadow. Okay, we need to siege him now. Oh man, I have no watch and available voice. Okay, he's. I think he's gonna come to me, right? I don't know if it's enough. If, if it's enough, but I have. I have two works in one combo. But this Rohirrim archers, dude, they are so crazy and scary. Oh my god, don't destroy my ballista. Ooh, okay, he didn't pay attention. My bad. Okay. Oh my god, he's melting my shark, bro. Oh my god, he's melting my shark, bro. Okay, let's siege. What? Oh my god, my shark. Ah, man. Okay, at least he's forced to disengage. And we bullied the normal Rohirrim quite a bit. And I think they are more threatening when it comes to the, um, you know, structural damage, dealing damage to the structures. Oh, be careful. Okay, it would be great if we can destroy two parts of the wall before it destroys the only siege weapon we have. Remember, we lost the siege works, right? So we need to make sure to protect this ballista. One part of the wall is broken, but in a dream world, I want to destroy two parts. So it's going to take him longer time to repair it, you know? Let's give banner to this dude. Banner, boom. Okay, so for the worst case scenario, we have also um, freezing ring from the spell book. That's good. But in a dream world, I want to wait for my Saruman before I can go in, you know? Because when you don't go without Saruman and you have no Lourdes leadership, it might be tricky a little bit. It's not like, you know, you want to have like the best possible terms, you know what I'm saying? I want to cripple this dude. Cripple him. You shall not move. Okay, Tyrion King stands alone, crippled. Kill him. Nice, he's dead. Now we need to turn on the Rohirrim Archers actually and then fight them. Rohirrim Archers is not very strong against Fyros. And without leadership from Theorin, they will even take more damage. 
And we broke multiple parts of the wall. That's actually great. In the meantime, we are using the war guiders for the map control. We broke four parts of the wall, actually. Holy. Three parts. It's enough. We need to invest more than 6,000 for this. Always attack the Rohirrim archers first. And then we need to turn. Turn, 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 turn. Turn, you see? And this way they are running into the pikemen. You always want to face the Rohirrim direction. And you can just turn with your units. If you don't do this, you will be able to get a great, great trample off into the backline of the army. Which are the crossbow men, which are very vulnerable against trample damage. Turn and fight. We have now Saruman. Okay, we need to make more combos and wait for the next war chant. Okay, that's the play. Again, always try to get the best possible terms and best possible odds before you actually go inside the jeans, okay? Full map control, boys. Holy! I mean, I played this so bad, actually. I played so rusty, but I think my opponent played even more rusty, more rusty than I did. Yeah, Aizen is strong in the mid-late game, you know? Very strong. With map control. With this much, we have all the stuff we needed. Charku are pinky. That's annoying me, actually, that Charku is so pinky. Okay, we have almost War Chant. Make a combo. We can use the speech craft. Go burn their lands. Leave none alive. My Lourdes is only missing one level. I mean, he's doing a good job hitting and running. I like it, what he's doing. But I think he's way too behind to do this effectively. Now we have also leadership from Saruman, which means more armor. Okay, I'm gonna go inside the jeans, use everything. Use the wargs to go into the base, okay? My army will follow up. Here you wanna destroy always the well first, which... Ignore everything, go for the well. Because Stichu doesn't really matter, as they can't respawn. Because the... I mean, as they have no leadership because of the... Freezing rain, right? So let's send them back, they are badly damaged. Sharku, I mean, not Sharku. Lord, stop attacking the farm, bro. Again, only structures, okay? We have lots of leadership on our army. Um, Lord's also got level 5, that's big. So Lord, Saruman, and Warchant. Remember, Sharko only gives leadership to the Vorks. Okay, we are dealing heavy damage. That's amazing. Alright, we can trample this, no problem. Again, we need to go for the well, boys. We need to go for the well. I'm gonna use Fireball. Take this. Oh, yeah, he's focusing my Saruman. Be careful! No, 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 Saruman! Okay, we need to cripple this dude right there. Saruman, your sacrifice will not be meaningless. Look, Lourdes now. Lourdes gonna hit like a truck. Kaboom. Kaboom. Look, they are clumped up. Look, 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 look. Kaboom. Oh, son. Okay. We can ignore the ends completely. We can just go for the structures. Put Lourdes on top of the wall just for the memes. And go for the structural damage. Because Lourdes' leadership is general leadership. It also works on every unit. GG well played, my friend. What a game, man. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad for the first game. After a long time. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. We are getting so many ranks because of the win against the rank 3 player. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.